Hey everyone, Tony Minito here. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about how to add a really nice kind of polished glaze layer onto your restorations. Uh, I know there's been a lot of these types of videos that are out there. Um, I'm going to show you my technique uh, specifically with printing on the Einstein and the materials that you're able to do uh, with that. So let's go ahead and get started. So to be to begin, you're going to start by obviously printing your restoration, and then you're going to begin the post-processing, starting with the alcohol bath, uh, just as the instructions for use tell you. Uh, and then here it gets a little bit different at step three, because I'm only going to have you do half of the recommended post-cure in your Odo Flash. All right, you're only going to do half of that because we're going to add our quote-unquote glaze layer, and we're going to finish the second half of that post cure after that has been placed okay so you're going to do the first half of that post cure you're going to remove your supports uh, if it's um, like a flexera crown or something like that at this point i would refine the anatomy obviously if you're doing a night guard uh, you're not going to necessarily need to do that um, and then i will in some cases and i don't always use air abrasion to clean that surface but once again, for, for Flexair, if I'm doing veneers or if I'm doing uh, a crown or a bridge or something like that, and I'm going to add some stain uh, before I add my glaze, as I'm going to show you here, then I will do some air abrasion just to make sure that surface is nice and clean. So really nothing novel here other than you're only going to do half of the recommended post-cure uh, up to this point, okay? And then once all those supports are done and you have your restoration exactly where you want it, so once again, if it's Flexera, you may want to refine the anatomy a little bit, as I will often do. If it's Night Guard or something like that, you won't necessarily do that, but you want to make sure you get all those little support nubs off by this point. And then if you are adding stain, you need to do that at this point. Uh, for crowns, I will do this. I'll, usually use um, optiglaze the syst that optiglaze system for mine but uh, you can use ivoclar stains which work really well sometimes i will mix in a little bit of additional flexera material in with the stain i find those ivoclar stains are very potent and so sometimes by adding just a little flexera uh, to that stain it just helps to diffuse a little bit more evenly so you can try that out. Here I just added a little more chroma to the gingival third and a little bit of um, kind of a violet into the incisal just to give the illusion of translucency. Um, but I'm just adding those and I'm curing with my normal curing light, okay? And it's important that when you're using this technique that you have a specific curing light that you're using. 3D printed materials, uh, tend to cure at a lower wavelength. For Einstein, uh, those materials are optimized for 385 nanometers, and so your curing light has to have a special LED chip in it that will cure at those lower wavelengths. Some of the other printers on the market cure at 405. Just to give you some background, uh, these curing lights are optimized for camphor quinone, which is the photo initiator found in our bonding agents and chair-side composites and that is optimized for about 460 nanometers. So this is quite a bit lower, and so you have to have specific curing lights. The two that I've shown here on the left are the two that I have, and they both work really well. I also have the two on the right, and they do not work well for this. So make sure that you have the proper curing light to be able to uh, tack cure these. By, by the way, uh, I, I lecture a lot on composites and chair side dentistry as well, and these two lights on the left are often uh, kind of uh, noted as being two of the very best lights. So the Velo and the um, the blue, fa blue Phase Power Cure by Ivoclar are two excellent lights uh, if you're in the market. Um, so you're going to add a thin coat of your, whatever your material is. So if it's Flexera, if you're printing a, a crown or a bridge or something, uh, you would add a thin layer of Flexera and you would tack cure that for 10 seconds. If you're doing a Night Guard, you would add Small Guard, just a thin, very thin layer over the top. Uh, and once again, tack cure that with your curing light just to set that and make sure that it's not going to smear. 
And I usually find that it takes two very thin coats to get a nice kind of smooth, smooth even surface. So uh, I will add one layer, I will cure it, and then I'll add a second and cure it again. Okay, once again, the, the curing light that you use in this is very, very important. And then it's important also to leave this surface completely undisturbed. So I try not to touch it at all. I will usually, if I'm using a crown, I will have it on a peg or something so I don't have to manipulate it with my fingers. Uh, because the next step is after I've cured this with my chair side curing light, I'm going to transfer it into a glycerin bath and I'm gonna put it back in my Flash for the second half of the post cure. And so what I use for this, for smaller restorations like crowns, I will use a little lab case, something that you would get, you know, a crown or a bridge back from the lab in, and I will just fill that with glycerin. Or for larger restorations like night guards or the odd denture hybrid that I do, I will use just one of those takeout soup containers that you can get. Um, really easily at, at most, honestly, most takeout restaurants have something like this. Uh, and you can get one that's that's hasn't been used and you can trim it with scissors if you need to shorten it. And often you do need to shorten it in order to fit it into your Odo Flash. But you'll submerge it into the glycerin and you'll do the second half of your post cure. So for Flexera, that would be another 3000 flashes. For Small Guard, I think it's a thousand flashes for the second half. And then your final result that you find will be really, really nice uh, as far as the smoothness and the, the, uh, the shine of that restoration. So not only will it look more like natural two structure if you're using Flexera, if you're doing this on Smile Guard, it will just have a nicer feel for the patient. And in fact, you can even do this after you make your adjustments. That's what I, I tend to do because I have had a little bit of, of trouble getting these perfectly smooth. Uh, I don't have, uh, I'm talking about small guard, uh, night guards here. I don't have uh, like a lathe with pumice and high shine in my office. We just don't have that capability. So we just don't have any place to put it, uh, quite frankly. So uh, I found that this just gives them a much uh, smoother surface, something that uh, patients tend to tolerate really well. So I'll make my any occlusal adjustments that I'll need to chair side, and then I will do this real quickly um, to make sure I get a nice smooth finish on that restoration. So, and I do change my glycerin out regularly. I think it does go bad just kind of, you know, dipping your fingers or dipping restorations into it. So every four or five uh, I just use regular vegetable glycerin. I think it's about $10 on Amazon for a bottle of that. So not very expensive. Um, so, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, feel like you have to use it uh, for, for, you know, 15, 20, 25 cure cycles. It's just after every four or five, just change it out and get some fresh glycerin in there. All right, so just some take home points. Uh, basically, the whole idea of this, the crux of this is that you want to cure that uh, glaze layer without creating an oxygen inhibited layer. And that's why you cure it in the glycerin. So that's kind of the important part of this technique. Uh, and once again, it does require specific curing lights. The two that I showed you are not the only two, but you need to do a little bit of research to make sure that yours has that lower wavelength LED chip in it um, and then just make sure I think that that curing it for as long as I do that whole second half of the post cure just helps to completely polymerize that layer and will help with the durability of it so hopefully this helps for you and uh, yeah give me feedback anytime you can find me on social media on, on uh, Instagram my handle is smile professor and I'm on Facebook occasionally. It's not my favorite platform, quite honestly, but uh, you can find me on there. Uh, if you direct message me, I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks.